So this is a movie about how to write names for uh, compounds in chemistry. I usually break it into three primary compounds, in or, in or, or three types of compounds in inorganic chemistry. The first is binary, the second is ternary, and the third is acids. Now acids can be ternary or binary, so it's not a perfect uh, flow chart. Uh, but it, this, will, this flow chart will generally help you if you uh, need to write a uh, chemical formula for a, for a compound. So to show you what I mean, let's, if I take a look at a compound like um, Suppose I had something that you're just familiar with, Na with Cl, that's probably a compound you've heard of before. Would you say that is a binary, which means two elements, or ternary, which means three elements in the compound? And um, I might also mention that ternary, um, although it technically means three, if there's three or more elements, you use these, this set of rules. All right, so ternary, uh, for binary compounds, this is binary. Uh, you go down and, and uh, decide what you've got. So you, you got a metal and a nonmetal, or do you have two nonmetals? Well, sodium chloride is a metal and a nonmetal. Sodium is a metal, chlorine is a nonmetal. So if it's a metal and a nonmetal, then you have to decide is sodium a variable metal or a non variable metal. So what we would do is go over here and check out the, on the periodic table and see if sodium is variable or non variable. So you'd look at sodium and see it's got a plus one but only a plus one so it's it is a non-variable doesn't change its charge ever uh, as opposed to something like titanium who has three different charges or vanadium which has four different possible charges or chromium which has three different possible those are called variable metals um, if you look at sometimes students think well is a plus two is variable but but that just is a, it's a single charge for magnesium Magnesium would have only a plus two charge. It's just a single charge. It's not variable. Variable means you've got more than one possibility. All right, so since sodium chloride is just a non-variable, you say the name of the non-metal and name, and then the, excuse me, you say the name of the metal and the non-metal ending in IDE. So that's why this particular compound is called sodium chloride. All right, so that's the first one. The second one, or second example, I'll give you one over here. Suppose we had uh, something like Na2SO4, and you're going to try and name that. So would you say that it's binary or was it ternary? It falls into the ternary category because there's sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. Now, if it's ternary, that means it's going to have a polyatomic ion in it. All right, so... You have to decide is sodium variable or non variable, and sodium is non variable. So, since it's non variable, you just say the name of the metal. Oh, <laughs> the name of the metal is sodium, and the name of the polyatomic ion is sulfate. All right, and you know the polyatomic ion is sulfate because when you go to the periodic table down at the bottom, sulfate is written right down here. And while I'm talking about this, uh, while I'm, this just popped up and made me think I should remind you that hydrogen sulfate is HSO4. Uh, we commonly, I commonly see students make a mistake when I say phosphate. Phosphate's over here. This is hydrogen phosphate, two parts to that compound, and dihydrogen phosphate. So remember, phosphate's just plain PO4 when that comes up. All right, so now, a couple more examples. Let's suppose we have... Um, a compound like this, say iron uh, Fe2, say PO4, parentheses 3, like that. Oops, Fe3. I'm going to change this, hang on. I meant to say Fe3, PO4, 2. All right, so if we did that, we have to consider what is, is iron a variable or non variable? You can see it's ternary because there's three, three elements iron, phosphorus, and oxygen. So does iron vary? And the answer to that is yes. And you know that again by going back to your periodic table and look at iron, and iron's right here. It's got a three and a two. So iron is a variable metal. Since it's variable, we need to say what the charge is. So to do that, you have to go back and find the charge on the phosphate. Now the phosphate on your polyatomic ion list has a charge of negative three. And I'll show you that real quick. Um, Mr. Rierick's teaching his health class next door, so that's the background noise. 
All right, so here we go. Phosphates down here at the bottom. See right here? PO4 with a minus 3. So that's how we know it's minus 3. All right, so since there are two phosphates, see this 2 right here tells you there's two of everything's in parentheses. So 3 times 2, since negative 6, is my total negative charge. So my total positive charge has to be positive 6. But there are three atoms to make that positive 6. So each atom's got to be positive 2. All right, so once again, the phosphate's negative 3, but there are two of them, which makes negative 6. So the iron has to be positive 6 to match it, because they remember the rules for naming, they had to add up to equal 0. So there are three iron, three iron atoms, so each one's going to be positive 2. 6 divided by 3, 2. So we would call that iron. Now we have to say what the charge is, since there's more than one. So iron, oh, iron 2, made a mistake there. Iron 2 phosphate. Oops. <laughs> I have a little trouble here challenging, being challenged with my eraser. Okay, so iron 2 phosphate. Alright, so there you go. That's how you name a ternary compound. Let's do, take a look at one like this. And what if you had um, P2O5? Would that be binary or would that be ternary? So that'd be binary because it's two elements. It'd be two nonmetals this time. So you come down, you go over two nonmetals. Is there two nonmetals? You say the prefix, use a prefix for two, and then a nonmetal name, whatever it is, and prefix for whatever, and then nonmetal name again, and ending in IDE. So this one is phosphorus and the prefix that we use for two is di. So it's di phosphorus and there are five oxygens so it's pent oxide. Now I'm going to write the prefixes right here they are mono di tri tetra penta Hexa, hepta, or hept, oct, non, and dec. That's 1 through 10. Okay, so if I had, uh, say, P4010, I'm not going to write this one down because of room, but it would be tetraphosphorus dec oxide. All right, now we're going to take a look at a, just a few more examples. So let's take a look at uh, this particular compound. What if we had um, PB... 3, N, 4. So we look at N. Oh, by the way, is this binary or ternary? So it's binary, so you're over here. It's a metal and a non-metal because lead's a metal. Come down is lead variable, so you go back and check. And lead um, is right here, so it is variable because it could be 2 or 4. So we would say lead. Then we have to say what the charge is in Roman numerals. So we're going to say the metal, the charge, and the non-metal ending in IDE. So the nitrogen is minus 3, and we know that because we look back over here, and we see that N is minus 3, right here, minus 3. So you come back. Um, 3 times 4 is negative 12, isn't it? Okay, so that's positive 12. Whoops. So that's positive 12. Whoops. All right, so that's negative 12, that's positive 12, but there's three of them, so each one has to be positive 4. So it's lead 4 nitride. All right, uh, let's do another one. Let's do, um, so it has BI, and it's what we had, um, SO4, we know sulfate's negative 2. Uh, oh, um, before I do that, let me make the formula right. So Bi2, SO4 in parentheses 3. Alright, so just, just, we're just going to name this compound. So it's negative 2, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. And we know the bismuth has to be positive 6. So there's two bismuths, so each one's positive 3. So this would be called bismuth 3. Sulfate, because SO4's name is sulfate based on your um, periodic table. 
Now you notice on this one, I didn't. I just went ahead and named it. I didn't go through the flow chart. So let's go back and go through the flow chart. There are three elements. So we're looking at the ternary. The first element is bismuth. This variable. Okay. So you had to go down here, say the metal, the charge, and the polyatomic ion. All right. Let's go to acids. Do a couple acids, and then we'll. I'll let you try some. All right. So acids have an H in front. There are basically two kinds of acids you could have. You could have a binary acid. You could have a ternary acid. Okay, so which one of these is binary? This one. And if it's binary, you just say the prefix hydro, then the name of the element, then ick. So this would be called hydrochloric. If it's ternary, you say the name of the polyatomic ion, uh, the ATE polyatomic ions end in IC. The ITE polyatomic ions end in OUS, and you don't say hydro for this. So you look at this polyatomic ion, and that particular polyatomic ion is called nitrate. And here we'll find it. Right here, nitrate. So since that's nitrate, instead of saying 8, you put down IC, nitric acid. So that's called nitric acid. All right, if you're doing... Um, Sulfuric acid, or so, suppose you have this, H2SO4, that would be sulfate, so that would be three elements, so you're going to use this set of rules. Three elements, so sulfate, but sulfate would be, it'd be sulfic, but by convention or by habit, the rule doesn't, it gets changed a little bit, we call that sulfuric acid. And that happens with phosphate instead of, and sulfate, instead of um, sulfic and Phosphic, we call it sulfuric and phosphoric. Uh, but the basic rule, the ATE becomes ITE applies. If you have one like this, NO2 is another polyatomic ion, but it's nitrite. So we'll go back up here and take a look at it. See right here, nitrite, NO2 with a negative one charge. And nitrite becomes nitrous. So that would be called nitrous acid as opposed to nitric acid. See, NO3, 8 becomes ick. So ATE endings become ick. The ITE endings become OUS. And once again, binaries, like HI, for example, you say hydro, oops. You say hydro, oops, hydro, sorry. And then, oops, whatever the name of the element is, so this is iodine. So iodic. Let's change that. So hydro iodic. Iod iodine. And then you drop the ion and make it a um, IC ending right here. Hydro something ick. So hy hydro iodine, but it becomes hydro iodic. Alright, so that's a brief overview of how to name things, and I'll stop it there and post it.